Hey, Mike, um, TJD is playing at a level we haven't seen before. And I wonder, from your viewpoint, why is he playing at this kind of level? And how much growth have you seen from him in the last little while? Well, I just think the maturity of him, when we started a year, a little over a year and a half ago, um, he's grown. I thought he was great last season, you know, on both ends of the floor. You know, I go back to when I was – when I took the job and I was watching film on it, there was just a lot of holes in his game to me, just mainly from the defensive standpoint of, of not blocking shots as athletic as he was, and not plugging the holes from a defensive standpoint. These are things that I saw from a defensive standpoint. And then offensively, I just thought he needed to learn how to play with more juice, more energy. And I thought he did that last season. And, this season is just at another level, man. I mean, he he's doing things, you know. I mean, I I think we put him in position to handle the ball, like you know, because I did this in the pros with guys like Al Horford, Josh Smith, um, you know, Melo that could rebound the ball and and initiate your break offensively that gives you early strikes that way. And he's really been good in that area and been able to make plays off the bounce himself individually. So, um, I mean, I just don't see a lot of holes in his game now. I mean, everybody talk about, well, he doesn't shoot jump shots with shit. He does everything else. I mean, I, I mean, he's, he's playing at a high level, man. And Hey, uh, we're going to need that the rest of the way, because uh, right now we're still shorthanded in terms of bigs, you know, Logan and race being out. Um, it's hard to find some rest time for him. Thanks, Mike. Tom Brew. Uh, Mike, uh, another guy you're going to need along the way is Tamar Bates. And outside of that Michigan State game, he's just been really kind of struggling of late. Uh, just five of 22 shooting, 22% and struggling on the defensive end too a little bit, it seems. Uh, a, can you tell us you know, what, if anything, is going on with him and B, you know, heading in Northwestern with their guards and such? You know, how important it is that he's got to pick up his game quickly here? Well, you know, he's played well here at home. Um, and, you know, when you go out on the road, it's just a different mentality. And somehow I got to get them to understand it and help them, you know, be better, to, to put us in a better position to win. Um, he has struggled on the road. Um you know, Gallo's had his ups and downs on the road. Um, and, you know, I was on him a couple of games ago on the road that, hey, guys, you you know, you guys got to pick it up because you're a big piece to what we're doing based on the minutes that, are, you know, you're playing out there on the road. So, you know, I got to help him. You know, I mean, that's the only thing I can say to you guys. I mean, because – it has been a struggle for those two guys. I think Gallo gets by because of the energy that he brings from a defensive standpoint that they help you like the other night stay in the ball game. Keegan. Hey, Coach. Uh, have you kind of seen a Rutgers-like attitude going into Northwestern? You've lost the last two, including the tough situation last season, and now they're coming off this big win over Purdue. What kind of attitude and mindset are your guys carrying into Wednesday's game? Well, it's it's a big time game, man. I mean, both teams got identical records. Um, statistically, we're pretty close. Uh, you know, in different areas, offensively and defensively, in the Big Ten, they got tremendous guard play with Boo and Chase. Um, um, and I thought they hurt us here, so you know. Our focus has just got to be, you know, we got to we got to go in with the defensive mentality. I mean, you can't – they're a good offensive team and they get after you defensively. So, you can't get around either one of them. So, you're going to have to combat that with defense and rebounding and be – and you're going to have to be able to put the ball in the hole. I mean, there was a lot of points scored in the game here. Um, and, you know, our, our points came late, you know, when we were down early, uh, we outplayed them the first, the second half. But hell, they 
they did what they needed to do the first half to get them the cushion where we had to scramble to get back in the game. So, hey, it's going to be a dog fight. They playing in front of their crowd, their fan base. And so I'm just anxious to see what we be made of when we get there. Mike Schumann. Yeah, Coach, uh, going back to Trace, he, he's averaged 14 rebounds a game over your last 11. Um, you know, I know his back's feeling better, but but those numbers are far exceed anything he's done throughout his entire career. What can you tell us specifically when it comes to rebounding about what is fueling him right now? It's maturity, man. He's, he's learning how to do things on the floor. I mean, I've seen it with players over my career, man, in terms of, you know, they started one place and then all of a sudden, you know, the light goes off, man, and they end up in a much better place for your ball club. And that's where he is right now. I mean, he's doing some some incredible things for our team and rebounding is a big part of it. Um, but, you know, I'm always harping on guys around him. You know, the fact that in college, everybody shoots a lot of threes, you know, those long threes create long rebounds. And, you know, I tell every game going in that, you know, we can't leave it up to trace and just our bigs to get rebounds. You know, we got a team rebound and your guards got to get in there and pick up some of the scraps, but he's, he's been tremendous man in terms of rebounding the ball. Seth. Mike, after the Michigan game, you mentioned that you'd tightened the rotation even before you knew race was out because you didn't want to put pressure on, on CJ and Caleb. Was that just because of the matchup or because it was a tough road game? And do you see that tighter rotation continuing moving forward? No, I mean, I, it, that was that's, that's the first time I've ever used just seven players in my whole career as a head coach. Um, I just thought at that time, you know, a minute or two slip up, you lose the game. That's how I felt, you know, as that game was unwinding. And, you know, it's no knock against Caleb or CJ because they've given us some positive minutes when they play uh, this season. I just elected to go that way based on how, my feel and and where we were in the ball game. It had nothing to do with those guys at all. Um, no, I don't like playing seven guys. You know, I need to play more guys because that's – you know, you just never know when you really have to throw someone, you know, will they be ready and feel good about their play? Um, but no, that's that's just something that happened the other day. Um, and hopefully I can stay away from that by getting some healthy bodies back and and go from there. <clears throat> Alex. Coach, thank you for the time. We appreciate it. Uh, now that you've had maybe a little bit of time to go back and look at the Michigan game, we're not sure if you how closely you stayed the film, but th th those last eight possessions for Michigan, they didn't score. It's not very often you see a, a Big Ten team at home go 5-12 late in, in a game without scoring. What can you say maybe that stood out from watching that uh, about the defense and just the guys being able to step up in a, in a tough situation like that and, and grind out a win? I just think we were on par coming down the stretch. We weren't really that great offensively, and neither team could really put the ball in the hole. But I thought that five-minute stretch, you know, defensively, you know, we were really locked in um, in terms of the things that they were running that we, you know, we covered going into the ball game. Um, and, you know, I, tur I turned the arm on it. At about the two minute mark, and I said, "Man, we need one little break and a crack, man, in order to pull this game out." And we got the, you know, we got it. You know, I mean, down the stretch, you know, we made defensive stop after stop, and then Jalen made the the drive to to get fouled and, and, and at least give us two free throws. And even though Ray, Trace missed his free throws on the front end of the one and one, that eight to nine minute. Uh, eighth to nine minutes second where we had to get a stop. I mean, we, you know, normally teams get a better shot than they got. And I thought our defense forced a terrible shot and we was able to secure the win. Jack. Hey Mike, um, Northwestern obviously picked up a big win yesterday. Just what impressed you about the way that they were able to slow Purdue down and kind of the, the challenges they present uh, for Wednesday's game? Well, again, I mean, they 
you know, I thought Purdue was pretty much in control. Um, and then coming down the home stretch, man, that last six, seven minutes, that's when, you know, you have to buckle down and figure it out on both ends. And Northwestern did with their defense, man. And then they started making shots. Um, I mean, it was a hell of a game. I mean, I, you know, I thought Purdue was in the driver's seat for, for a while, but Northwestern changed it with their defense and, and they're a good offense. Those two guards, man, they, they're two of the best, I think, guard combo guards in the big 10. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta combat that. And we got to combat it for 40 minutes, man, because they, they're going to play minutes unless they're in foul trouble. You know, they both played, I think, 38, 39 minutes last night or yesterday afternoon. And unless we get them in foul trouble, we know they're going to be on the basketball floor. We got to deal with it. Mason. Coach, with Miller Cop's progression here and kind of how he's fit into Indiana in his second season, he's going back to Northwestern for the final time in his career Wednesday night. What have you kind of seen from his progression this year that's allowed him to be in this position? Well, again, I mean, he's he's played well for us. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I, I go back in the NBA when you get traded, you know, from a team, you always want to go back and, show him why you, you shouldn't have traded me. And, um, you know, he didn't play particularly well up there last season. And so I'm sure that's on his mind. And I'm going to talk to him a little bit about, you know, just relaxing and just just play, man, when things, you know, when it comes your way, just you got shots, take them. Um, you not put so much pressure on yourself, uh, you know, to really perform and play well. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to need a total team effort from everybody, not just Miller, uh, to beat this team there. Okay, last question, Bob. Yeah, Mike, maybe an odd question, but what do you think Trace wants his legacy to be at IU? I mean, for all those years, he was a very good player on a team that didn't do very much. And now he's getting an opportunity to not only play well, but lead you to a spot where you're competing for the Big Ten title. I think it's just that alone. Um, you know, his legacy would be, you know, to win a Big Ten title. You know, if we're able to win the Big Ten title this year and then go on and do something special in the tournament, that would be his legacy, man, because he, you know, his freshman, sophomore, he just didn't, you know, didn't win much. You know, never made it to the big dance. Um so last year was a major jump for him in this this program and for me, you know, being the first time head coach um coming in here. But his legacy, man, is I mean, statistically, he's done everything that you can do. You know, he's reminded me that, hey, I'm getting ready to go past you. You know, he know it's it's out there, man. And it's for me, it's it's great. You know, records are meant to be broken. But I think winning a Big Ten title and a national title. Will, will separate, you know, his his career in terms of what he's done here, man. I mean, and that's what I'm pushing for. You know, I'm I want nothing but the best for the kid because he's he's played his ass off for us. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you Wednesday. Thank you, Mike. All right, guys.